experience, by definition, is not one thing. It requires the observer and the observed. Otherwise, you don't have experience. The idea that because there is an observer and an observed, it can't be reproduced uh, in a material way, that doesn't make any sense. Human brains are machines. They are biological machines, obviously, designed by the forces of evolution rather than by humans. And uh, there is no reason to think that consciousness and thought you know, wouldn't be the result of computations going on in the brain. And in fact, uh, the progress in AI suggests that uh, this, this uh, hypothesis, uh, which is not only supported by biology, but is also supported by the advances in AI, as we see machines becoming better and better at doing things that brains do. Just about the Turing test, if a machine can imitate aspects of what we do as humans, it doesn't mean to say that the machine has the characteristics of humans. Your calculator can, can add up better than you can, but it doesn't mean to say it thinks when it adds up. So why is the Turing test even plausible? And it's because he introduces this idea of language, that if somehow the computer can function, or the machine can function as well as we can with language, it should be said to think. And I think the problem there is that we imagine that the computer understands language by understanding the meaning of this word and the meaning of that word and putting them all together and then thinking, oh, well, if it can use it as well as we can, it must be thinking. But that's not what a computer is doing. It's got nothing to do with understanding any word. No computer understands a single word. All that it is doing is it has a mathematical way of predicting what an intelligent member of that language user group would use as the next word in a sentence. I'm going to step back a little bit because I think what Hillary said shocks me. What matters for science is how good are these theories are predicting what we observe. And we do observe a whole lot of things about consciousness. But of course, no scientific theory can be 100% sure that this is what's going on. And so I think uh, we should not discard that this principle behind how science works uh, could apply to consciousness. Of course, uh, we have to uh, be able to test our, our accounts, but I think there are limitations to what you can do with a model that will be, uh, as it were, always outside of that framework. And the materialist framework, I think, has squashed the universe. It's a monist story. There's one thing in the world, it's material. And there's a problem that experience, by definition, is not one thing. It requires two things. It requires the observer and the observed. Otherwise, you don't have experience. Otherwise, you're like a stone. You need that relationship. And you've got to get that relationship back if materialism was going to be successful in trying to make an account of either thought or experience. I have to respond to this. So <laughs> the, the story about observer and observed is, uh, you know, meaningless uh, if you go and look at what AI is doing. We are building agents. So th these are like computer programs that act in the world, uh, perform computation, have an internal state that evolves with you know, what they're seeing, and have goals, which basically correspond to intentions. And they are observing things out there. They are building up uh, an understanding of these things so that they can act to achieve their goals. All of these things already exist. Now, you know, not a level of human intelligence, but, you know, the idea that because there is an observer and an observed, it can't be reproduced uh, in a material way, that doesn't make any sense because we already do that for like simpler systems and there's nothing magic there. Well, then that would be interesting to see what that, how, how, that, how that model might operate. Maybe there's a way in which you could frame how a machine could somehow take account of itself, and perhaps you might then be able to begin to frame something that is something a little bit more like consciousness. This is quantifiable. And in order to understand our intuition about understanding, you'd like these predictions to work in, in new settings, right? So otherwise, it's just like a big table that repeats the things that it has seen. But now there's enough scientific evidence for things like chat GPT, GPT-4 in particular, that uh, these systems can generalize, can make good predictions way outside of the data they're being trained on.
To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.